Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. This day is going to be a day in the life of a makeup artist. I do want to preface this by saying that it is actually two weeks later since I actually did this vlog. The only reason I'm having to redo this is because your girl stupidly enough deleted three of the files and I deleted them out of the trash can on accident and now I can't recover them. But just know that this was a lot longer of a video to begin with and I'm so pissed because I just deleted it like two minutes ago. Anyways, in that vlog, I did talk about how I just got done filing taxes but I just wanted to let you guys know that filing taxes is very expensive as a business owner. I do get a lot of questions sometimes about this. So first of all, I do want to preface this before I go on. I am in no way, shape or form a licensed CPA, so I can't consult with you about legal tax questions or advice or anything. This is just the things that my accountant has personally passed on to me. Keep in mind that everybody is in a different business situation, personal situation and financial situation. So what I say for me personally is not going to be the same thing as you. So a lot of questions I get is whether you should file as an LLC or not. I do want to let you know the difference between an LLC and a sole proprietorship. So if you do not have a registered business and you're not filing taxes as its own separate entity, separate from your own social security number, then you are automatically a sole proprietor. You don't have to fill out any documents or anything. It's just another stream of income at that point in time. And you are considered a sole proprietor. Then a lot of people think that people just file as LLCs because it makes them more official in their business. Yes, technically it does make you more legal to the government's eye, but realistically, Basically, filing it as an LLC actually is more for your protection than anything. I'm gonna use this example because I used this example in the last time I was talking about this too. Say you're doing makeup on somebody, you cause an allergic reaction, and then that person goes to sue you. Since all your business expenses as a sole proprietor are normally just connected to your personal social security number, they can actually go after your personal assets, which means they can go after your home, your car, and any other assets that you own that are legally underneath your name. This is the reason why you actually want to file separately as an LLC and make your business's own separate entity so then if they go to sue you then they can really go after anything you own as far as your business. I also want to let you guys know that you don't need to really have like a certain income or um, reach a certain monetary level in income to make an LLC. You can do it at any time. And then I do want to preface this by saying that I do not have an LLC for my business yet. This is only because last year I figured out that it is legally required to have a license in the state of Indiana to practice as a makeup artist. So I'm going to school in November of this year to get my esthetician's license. And then once I obtain that, then I'm going to be able to practice legally as a makeup artist. So I wanna make sure that I am legally able to operate my own business before I file as an LLC. So that is the difference between the two of them. Um, again, please consult with your own accountant. Um, don't just try to figure it out yourself on TurboTax. Plus, if you get your taxes wrong and you do it on TurboTax yourself, you have nobody to come back on except for yourself. But if you file with an accountant, then the liability falls on them. Then going on to the next question that I usually get a lot of confusion about. I have said numerous times in my Real Talk series before that you shouldn't be afraid of spending money and really investing in your business because you need enough expenses to offset your income so you're not paying a shit ton in taxes. So I'm going to give this example and this is all hypothetical just to let you guys know. So say for instance that you make $100,000 in your business, okay? A lot of people will think automatically that their profit is the $100,000 but you're not actually profiting that much because taxes aren't taken out of that and also your expenses aren't taken out against it. When you are in a normal nine to five job, you get a W-2 statement back and even for paychecks normally too. If you look on your statement, all your federal, your state, and even your county taxes are taken out if your state does that. With being a business owner, we don't have any of those taxes taken out. So you are getting 100% of the proceeds all throughout the entire year. Since all those taxes aren't getting taken out and you legally have to have them taken out, <laughs> then what you're doing is at the very end of the year when you file taxes, you're having to back pay all of the money that you didn't pay the government in taxes throughout that whole entire year. So that is why you pay a shit ton in taxes when you actually go to file them. Then also your expenses aren't taken out against that $100,000 either. So say you have $20,000 in expenses. So $100,000 minus $20,000 would be $80,000. And that would be what your so-called profit is. Now, as far as taxes go, everybody knows that there are different tax brackets, at least in the United States there are. The higher income that you make, the more taxes get taken out. Normally with self-employment taxes, like any small business, it's usually between like 15 to 20%, I wanna say, but it will fluctuate depending on how much you make. So say that you are making $80,000 as a profit, you might be on the higher end of things. So you might be in like the 20% range or something. So 20% 
of $80,000 is a lot of freaking money. I'll put that on the screen because I can't math right now. But then say if you make $100,000 and then you say spend $60,000 in your business, 100,000 minus 60,000 is $40,000. And then that also could be in a lower tax bracket. So that probably is like in the 15% tax bracket range. So 15% of $40,000 is obviously not going to be as much as you making $80,000. This is the whole reason why I encourage people to not be afraid to invest money in their business or invest money in their clients and their kit and everything. It could also be in your website or your client management softwares or whatever you guys have as your back end kind of procedures too. I do also want to let you know that the best way to prevent you from paying all this money up front at the very end of the year, when you go to file taxes, you can actually set up quarterly taxes. This is something that you figure out with your accountant. You either do quarterly taxes or monthly taxes. Monthly taxes are only for those that like make a crap ton of money every single month. But I'm personally set up on quarterly taxes. I pay them like every three months or so throughout the year, however that figures out. And that is how I set it up with my accountant. That way I'm not paying a whole ton of money at the very end of the year. And it's more so just broken down. Now, the really hard thing about quarterly taxes though, is that you almost have to estimate how much money that you think you're going to make through the entirety of the next year, which is really hard to do. I told you guys last year that I had to pay like several thousands of dollars in taxes. And I do want to give you guys a number figure this time because I don't think people realize actually how much you need to save up for taxes. So I paid $4,000 in taxes last year um, because I did not set myself up on quarterly taxes and that's just what I had to pay. Luckily, I did save up for it though, but I wasn't expecting it to be that much. I'm not gonna lie. Like I haven't seen a tax return in like four years now. It's just kind of hard sometimes, especially when you're out of, you know, your season pretty much. Like I am out of bridal season right now. And if I did not have a savings account to fall back on right now, like I would be in a world of hurt. Like where are you gonna get $4,000 from? Do you know what I mean? Like when you're not working. So yeah, it's hard as a business owner sometimes. This is why I highly encourage people to save as much money as they can during their booming bridal seasons and just really business months in general. Please don't spend it. Just put it into savings because you're going to need those to pay taxes. This will probably seem like a lot of money and it totally is, but um, if you make a pretty decent amount for yourself, it's not that much of an expense, but you kind of just have to learn how to manage money a little bit better. It basically just teaches you how to be a little bit more financially smart with things. The only thing that you really missed in that photo shoot vlog um, that I had for this whole thing is that I basically was just prepping my kit. I didn't do anything with my actual makeup. I was just showing you guys like what I had in my hair kit, but I have a very basic hair kit. So I don't even think you guys missed that much. And then now I'm going to be flipping to me actually leaving for the photo shoot and doing the makeup application. So let's go. So it was really foggy this morning. I forgot to take a video of it, but it was so foggy. And now it's super sunny outside, so I don't know. This Midwest weather has got me. It's got me, guys. So yeah, I'm headed to the photo shoot right now. Again, as I said before, I'm doing more of like a film noir vintage style photo shoot, so I'm really excited about it. I had a little rant about this on all my social media pages. I just don't understand like why makeup artists are like expected to do hair too. This is by no means like shade against like any of the photographers that I work with that I do hair for too. When you go to be a makeup artist, you usually go for aesthetics, which is for skincare and you don't even cover hair at all. And then the worst part is when people go, oh no, I trust you. I'm like, no, you really should not. And I'll even warn people ahead of time. And they're like, no, I trust you. And then it ends up being bad and then they hate it. And then they complain about it. And I'm like, okay, I already told you though. So it's just one of those things that I just don't understand why makeup artists are expected to do hair. Like it doesn't make sense to me. They're actually two completely unrelated fields from each other. And I really think that having separate licenses for those would be ideal but everybody just groups all these cosmetology fields together and it just doesn't make sense. That is pretty much about it for my little car rant. So I'll go ahead and talk to you guys when I get there. Okay, I just made it here. It's a little bit tight parking back here, but it's fine. I just realized that I forgot to bring my brush canister where I like put all my dirty brushes in. So there's that. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm headed in right now. Real me to get it going, open me up Sweet talking like you mean it, but you're making it so complicated I fucking hate it Every time I get too close, you push me away Don't wanna stick, telling me you don't want any obligations And how you hate them Don't call me just cause you're lonely Maybe I'm 
I'm yours, maybe I'm not I think about it way too much and every single thought is making me Making me Give me something straight from your heart All this insecurity is tearing me apart You're making me sleepless You're making me sleepless Yeah I keep losing in this game of playing pretend I don't wanna be a 4am I'm suffocating Just by waiting on you So Don't call me just cause you're lonely You know you're killing me slowly Nah Maybe I'm yours, maybe I'm not I think about it way too much and every single thought Just making me Making me Give me something straight from your heart All this insecurity is tearing me apart You're making me Okay guys, I just finished with the photo shoot and oh my gosh, it went so good and I absolutely loved the look. As much as I love being a bridal makeup artist and like being a natural bridal makeup artist, it's kind of fun to go outside my element sometimes. I'm pretty much just going to be heading home. Um, sorry for the really short vlog. That is pretty much today in my life. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up if you did like it and also go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.